Welcome to the Beyond Jiu-Jitsu podcast. This is episode number 158. I'm Kieran Lefebvre, your co-host, joined by Adam Childs. Hello, Kieran. I recently had a student say to me, um, he was like, oh man, I saw you on this podcast, whatever. He's like, but I thought you were just a guest on the podcast. He's, he's like, it's oh, actually no. your podcast? And I was like, yeah, I do it with Kieran. <laughs> you know, he's like, I think it took multiple episodes till he was like, hang on a second. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Tell you what I get. Uh, there's a guy at the gym and fuck, my wife does this to me more, more consistently. But there's a guy at the gym here in Sweden that whenever he wants to roll with me, he goes, do you train jujitsu? And then like points at me. <laughs> Cause that's oh, because that's your, that's intro your intro. My verticals. On your videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. yeah it's, I mean, uh, I think the intro is pretty cringe, but initially it, it helped to get traction. But now that my content is embedded well within the jujitsu algorithm sphere, I don't need to do it anymore. But it's like, yeah, it's super, it's super cringe. And my, my <laughs> wife does it to me all the time. She goes up to me and goes, do you have elbow pain from jujitsu? So I smack <laughs> an elbow like I do in the videos. Do you know what your elbow is? Oh, man. She takes that piss out of my content more than any fucking troll of mine ever could. Uh, so it's good. It's very hurtful. Very hurtful. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me segue that to, to a little, a little bit of funny information that, the listeners wouldn't know. I think Kieran's wife, Loki, hates him because, uh, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so she's she's trolling your content. Care to tell people what she's done to your caffeine intake as well? Bro, she's been poisoning me. <laughs> she's been poisoning me. Like straight up, straight up been poisoning my coffee. So, uh, oh, man, this happened like I think uh, three weeks ago now. She, unbeknownst to me, she started slowly replacing out my coffee in the morning because we use a drip a drip fed coffee machine with decaf and hasn't been telling me did one scoop at a time so the the machine that we do you know normally it's like six small scoops and it creates the coffee in the morning so she started with one scoop and then you know the next day it was two scoops of decaf to you know two to four ratio and then all of a sudden by the end of the that three-week period it came like all decaf and one scoop of regular caffeine. And I remember sitting in the morning, I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm really good with like coffee lately. I haven't been getting caffeine headaches or this and that of, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and then she like just bursts out laughing and then she cannot keep a secret. Told me that she'd been slowly but surely replacing it out with fucking decaf. I couldn't believe it. And I, was, I, I didn't know why she was just making the coffee every single morning and like setting it up the night before and triggering it for the morning. I'm like, this is great. This is a great routine. I get up, get my coffee, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's fucking decaf, bro. It's bullshit. Now you, can't, now you can't trust her to make you coffee anymore. No, no. The trust saw, is gone. I saw this like uh, documentary where this, this wife of, uh, w- was poisoning the guy's coffee with bleach of a morning. This is oh, what I, I think feel. I saw that. Yeah, this is yeah, this yeah. is how I feel. It's I feel definitely, like I'm that man. It's definitely just as bad. I'd, I'd say worse. <laughs> I'd say worse. I, I think that I think bleach would be a sweet relief from the decaf. <laughs> anyway, yeah, she's a savage. Anyway, um, guys, we're, we're talking about today the importance of asking why. However, before we get started with that, mm. we're going to go over some of the the messages we got from our last episode where for anyone who made it to the end, we kind of asked what's the heaviest person you've trained with rolled with competed against. And do you have any weird food combinations or things that you think might be odd, but you still enjoy it a A, maybe because it's just weird or B because it is nostalgic from your childhood. So um, for a, a reminder I had mentioned that the, I rolled with this guy who was like 330 pounds, which is, uh, what was it? 140, 150 kilos. Ki- 150 kilos. And I was yeah. mentioning how Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal was saying in his prime, he was like 415 pounds, which I think That's is like crazy. 185 kilos. 188.24. <laughs> yeah. And then I'd mentioned that a weird thing that I used to eat and could still eat if I wanted to is like a grilled cheese and tomato sandwich, but I never liked tomato as a kid. So I would just put tomato sauce, which we learned, you know, Kieran's got a thing against tomato sauce. Don't know what he puts on his meat pies. Very un-Australian of you, Kieran. 
Anyway, I don't put any sauce in my meat pies. It's got sauce in it, bro. Like, <laughs> it's it is a fucking meat it's, pie. It's all gravy. It's, it's self. Gravy, it's self sourcing. Yeah, bro. It's, <laughs> it, it has sauce. The whole dish <laughs> is sauce. Like, fuck me. So we got some messages. Um, we got one from Jacob who said he hadn't hasn't trained with anyone massive. Two hundred and sixty pounds is the biggest person he's rolled with. That's about be... 120, just shy of 120 nah, kilos. I mean, it's still a heavy dude. One, 118 uh, kilos. Yeah. And said when he was a kid, and this food thing, I was shocked that he thought this was weird because I still do this. I know it'll be weird and gross for you, Kieran. But he was oh. like, when I was a kid, I used to put tomato sauce or ketchup on my scrambled eggs. And I'm like, yeah, there's yeah, nothing seen, wrong I've with that. People do people that. Do that. Like you, yeah, you order, you order a, a big breakfast at a cafe here in Australia and it can come with tomato sauce. It's not Bro, if I ordered a big breakfast and it came with tomato sauce, I would fucking walk out. <laughs> I'd be so offended. But what if it also came with a decaf coffee? Oh, that's throwing hands. We're throwing hands, bro. <laughs> um, and then he mentioned and then he sent a little reel saying, oh, you're talking about Swedish pizzas. Wondering if mm. you've ever tried Brazilian pizzas. Uh, no, obviously, no, I, I, repli- I replied to Jacob, so he knows the answer. But I said, yeah, I'm not sure about Kieran. I lived in Brazil for five years, so I've eaten plenty of Brazilian pizzas. Do I rate it as a whole? And, and I'm no pizza expert, right? I've never even had true Italian pizza. I've never been to Europe, right? Mm. Like I've never oh, had Chicago so deep good, dish. I've, I've never had Chicago deep dish. I've never had a New it's York good. slice, right? So I'm not a yeah. pizza expert. New York slice just, is not that great, in my opinion. Yeah, it I, doesn't look great. Nah, I think but, I just offended a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But the Maybe the Brazil- one I had was shit. Brazilian pizza, I, I don't particularly rate it. It's not like if all of a sudden I was at a party or someone's house and they ordered delivery and Brazilian pizza rocked up, like yeah. would I eat it? Yeah, it's not like I'm going to go, that's gross. Mm. But it's just the toppings aren't my jam. It tends to be a certain amount of cheese in saying that. Sounds great. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know that does sound great, but it sometimes feels like you're literally just eating a block of cheese. Um, okay, you w- if you go to Italy and you order the uh, Quattro Fromage, the uh, four four cheese four pizza. Cheeses. Oh my god, it, it, it's so fucking good, dude! Like, I'm not yeah. even a big cheese pizza guy, but the Italians they yeah. have. Yeah, okay, it's cliche, but I don't give a fuck. They have the best pizza in the world. The best pizza yeah. I've ever had is in Italy. By far, like it's yeah. so fucking good, man. It's so good. I had. It I, I could, I could guess that. But yeah, I've had some. Like, I've been to some fancy restaurants in Brazil, and like the mm. pizza was really good. My brother in, my brother in law in Brazil, he makes really good pizza. But as a whole, your generic takeaway pizza in Brazil, I don't really care for. Fair enough. All right. So, okay. but yeah. Anyway, thanks, thanks, Jacob. Thank you. I have another message here. Uh, I'm just going to read it out. Bro, I freaking love Catan. That's the f- opening line. Fuck yeah. Which is uh, the, bo- the board game the board Kieran game is talking about. Playing. Yeah. 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 Uh, heaviest person I've trained with is 300 pounds, a former powerlifter who's now a blue belt and a huge pain in the butt. So 300 pounds is 136 kilograms. That's, that's heavy. Big boy. Uh, here's the weird food thing. Get a McChicken from McDonald's. Take off the lettuce and mayo and add... Now hear me out. Grape jelly sounds gross, but super delicious. Fuck that, dude. That you can keep that. That's disgusting. <laughs> that, is, that is the <laughs> grossest thing. But like, I've got That's two, the I've, worst one so far. <laughs> I've got two main questions that, uh, that that story doesn't check out for me. I'm like, a, why didn't you just order it without lettuce and mayonnaise? Like, why be <laughs> why be why why, why be going? And then like B, like, the do McDonald's serve grape jelly? Did you take your own grape jelly to McDonald's? Like, how does this, how do these two things come together? I have no idea, my guy. But, That's one of them things. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not on board with that. I also, I think, I mean, I don't eat McDonald's, but the, I don't think they're that weird. I think it's pretty common that some people will get the fries and put them on their burger. McDonald's. My dad always used to do that. Yeah, I've that, seen other that, people that's do not it. Gross. That's not like disgusting. That's not just like being a, fucking... just being efficient. Just putting it all together. And yeah, um, you bit, see people. Bargain, that's all right. You see people dip their French fries into the the ice cream. 
I've done that. that. It's it's okay. It's not great. Like you it's, know, yeah. I would never buy. Advice. I would never buy the two things specifically for that purpose. But no, it's, it's but not great. Yeah, it's fine. I think it's one of them things that you know kids do and they think they're cool and whatever. Um, yeah. Okay, so I've got another one from a YouTube comment. Weird food combo uh, that I know deep down is gross, but also delicious. Mayonnaise on green beans. Don't knock it till you try it. Now, look, that one does sound a bit weird but I can see a world where it's not completely disgusting. Now, I'm not the biggest mayonnaise guy, yeah. but, you know, I like green beans. Yeah, beer. I used to, when I was a kid, kid, teenager, when my parents would make like a chicken parmesan schnitzel mm. thing, like I would have a little bit of thing of mayonnaise on the side as a mm. little sauce, if you will, to have with it. So, mm. but yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge mayo person. I mean... I'm not going to go ahead and try it, but it's not as weird as grape jelly on a McChicken. That's yeah, that's for sure. winning. That's winning for sure. I don't. <laughs> I I I can't even believe that someone actually does that. They I don't know. Okay, another yeah. YouTube comment is biggest guy I've rolled with is well over 250 pounds. Um, but obviously they never asked them because they're a bit overweight and over 250 pounds. So that's greater than 113 kilos. Pretty big. Um. And then another comment says that they were 130, 130 kilo. Sorry, the largest training partner is 130 kilos and 20 years younger. So 130 kilos <sighs> and uh, and young. So 130 is 286 pounds, closer to 287. Um, and last comment on YouTube is from Alex, uh, who says we have six guys at our gym over 120 kilos, which that is. 120, 265 pounds. So we have six guys at our gym, well over 120 kilos, and we call ourselves the goon squad and try to train together wherever possible so we're not surprised at comps. A lot of them have rugby backgrounds, uh, so they're a nightmare to take down. And we have some pretty um, big, sorry, we have some pretty good big boy guards. Yeah. Man. Nice. Too heavy, too heavy. But I want, how did they get to that weight? Eating McChickens with grape jelly. <laughs> <That's how. laughs> fuck, Bulk fuck, season. Fuck that noise. Man. Uh, my right, my well, mate and I used to train together, right? And he was a bit saucy at the time, if you know what I mean. And uh, after, like, we would do a huge fucking training session, like two hours of just super high volume at the gym, just lifting. And then after it, immediately after it, he'd be like, all right, let's go get um, Macca's or Hungry Jacks or whatever we'd get. And we'd, he'd go and just smash um, double McDoubles or whatever the fuck they're called, like two of them or three of them, and just eat like 3,000 calories worth of fucking McDonald's immediately after a workout. <laughs> but he, uh, he got big. <laughs> have, 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 you ever, have you ever tracked what's the most calories you've ever eaten in one sitting? In one sitting, I don't think I've ever tracked it because it would probably be at like an event, like a wedding or something like that, where or like yeah. you know something along those lines. But I you have ate had a lot well north at, of five thousand calories in one. You sitting. ate a lot at Cuba's wedding when we oh, went yeah. to Cuba's oh, yeah. wedding. Yeah, which is one of one of my students. Four thousand calories, which meant easily. when you think like it's actually not that difficult to do, is it really? Like, I mean, if I was to challenge you to eat 3,000 calories of broccoli, that would be very difficult. Yeah, that'd be gross. But I mean, I'd probably shit out of fucking Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a lot of food, but I mean, sometimes it's like Kieran and I were just talking a little bit about this sort of thing before we started recording. Like sometimes you don't realize, like you could have a, a little, um, what are they called? Like a appetizer or like little canopy, sorry, not appetizer, canapes or whatever, mm -hmm. depending on what it is, it could be a, a, a one bite mouthful thing that could be 300 calories, you know, easily. or whatever. In, yeah. And then, you know, and then you easily can eat like, you know, like 10 of them. Yeah. Right. And there you go. There's your 3000 3, calories. And like, you're yeah. not, you're not full at all. And then you go, then you get some drinks and then, you know, then actually the main courses come mm. or whatever. And then, mm. Yeah. yeah, that's why those 10,000 calorie challenges are super popular on uh, on YouTube. But I've never done one. I've been wanting to do one, but I just can't justify it. You know what I mean? Like why? Um, but yeah. they're not super difficult. Like for a, a guy, you know, your size or my size, it would not be difficult 
to eat 10,000 calories in a day, if you were strategic about it, if you actually wanted to get down 10,000 calories, it would not be hard. It would be the, the biggest thing that, that gets these guys um, that try these 10,000 calorie challenge is the palate fatigue because they choose foods that are, you know, the, their favorite foods. They, they go like super savory and then super sweet and then super savory. Like they just, you, you get what's called palate fatigue where have you ever been eating like say something sweet or something salty and then you're like, fuck, I just need the opposite. I need yeah, something yeah, yeah. sweet now. And, that, and that's because, you know, your brain gets overstimulated with that one taste uh, and it's called palate fatigue. It's a real thing. Uh, and it can also happen when you're eating the same food every single day, unless you're like, you know, you, if you're neurotypical, if you're neurodiverse, then, you know, whatever. But, well, bro, you could go get us, if you ordered the correct Starbucks Frappuccino, it could be 1500 calories, oh, yeah. you know, in that bad boy, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I could, I could easily have 10,000 calories in a day just of liquids, just, you know, yeah, just yeah. cram a whole bunch of fucking, you know, nut butter into, into a full fat you know, huge fucking protein shake or whatever, um, and put sugar go. in it or whatever, like oil and yeah, you could smash that yeah. easy. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, so yeah, well, I wanted to talk today about, yeah, the importance of asking why before we go any further, I don't mean being the dude at the gym. It's like, but, but why, but why? And, and but like, what, if, what if, what if they do this? I, that's not what I'm talking about. Don't be that dude. The, the okay? why, but why? Yeah, the white belt why, not that. <laughs> no uh, I, I'm just wanting to talk about actually understanding why you're doing something or choosing to do something I think is a really important question to ask because if you have the answer to that question, I think doing the activity or working towards that goal or whatever becomes – much more sustainable and much easier to get on board with. In saying that, sometimes the answer to why is just, well, just because, like, just because, you know, like, um, <clears throat> but you know, like, why do you play video games or why do you go running? Why do you do this? Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I got onto this train of thought because of one of the whys that I, I, that I'm going to mention shortly, but before that, I thought we'd start with something more fundamental, which has probably come up in general conversation in, in episodes before, mm -hmm. but it would have been a long time ago. So the why, the real why you started jujitsu, the real why I started jujitsu. Okay. So let's start with you, bro. What is the, if you really think about it analytically, yep. Yep. why did you, start jujitsu okay there's a lot of there's a lot of whys here i i've told this a million times so i'm just going to quickly rehash i did a trial class at gracie baja something like three years before i actually started training jujitsu at vantage with you adam and the reason that i initially was interested in that first like my first why as to why i wanted to start training jujitsu is i was a very um you know pretty jack dude i was a bodybuilder i was you know dabbled in powerlifting i was fit and strong and i thought i was king shit right i was young and stupid and and whatever i was going out all the time and i thought i had that typical mentality of oh bro if i just see red bodies hit the floor you know what i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm not even kidding like i'm like oh yeah i've got like fucking 10 kilos of muscle on that guy I smash him right just you know that fucking you, so you, i was about to say you're bradley martin yeah, before bradley, bradley martin. martin but i was like you know a, a skinny fucking pin dick version of bradley martin um but th that was uh, and i was very self-aware of that when i started you know fucking about with re mess rumbles in the navy with a guy called Dwayne, who um who's a good friend of mine and an ex-professional muay thai fighter and like the equivalent of maybe uh you know just shy of a, a, a blue belt right in in jiu-jitsu and uh, he fucking smashed me, right, without even trying and with the same size. And that made me realize, hang on a minute, there's, there's a whole other world here. And I all of a sudden had that feeling of feeling really secure when I walk around thinking I'm king shit to feeling like I'm in, like in danger of just walking around the street. Like it, it, it's, I'm, I'm going to the extremes here, but you know, I, I had that mentality all of a sudden that now when I'm walking around, I don't know. I knew that I couldn't fight. I knew I couldn't defend myself. And that like scared me a bit. You know what I mean? In a, in a weird sort of way. Um, so it wasn't like self-defense, but sort of. And so that's why I initially did the the trial class. But like I said before, the Gracie Baja just didn't vibe with me. I thought it was kind of gay. And so I never, I never <laughs> uh, 
I never actually signed up, but I, I I was very interested. I just never took the took the plunge. And then the reason that I walked into your gym was a little bit different. It was all of those reasons that 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 why that I just described never went away. It was still there. Um, but I I reached a point where I was getting a bit fatigued of the what I was doing in bodybuilding. I wasn't going to compete in bodybuilding any, anymore. Um, I didn't. I wasn't really interested in competing in powerlifting. So I wanted to do a sport. I wanted to funnel my expertise in fitness and nutrition into a sport. I wanted to get good at a sport. So I actually looked into CrossFit. I was like, well, should I start competing in CrossFit? Just randomly do CrossFit. So I tried it out a bit. I was doing my own CrossFit workouts for like six months. Um, I got pretty decent just by myself without even going to a fucking CrossFit gym, just doing the basic, um, the, what do they call them? The girl name workouts, Wads. right? Yeah, what? Yeah, but the like the specific the, oh, the, the beginner series of of CrossFitters will know what I'm talking about. I so I did no all idea. the yeah. So I did like Cindy and all the all the the girl names and some of the the um the hero uh, workouts. Uh, anyway, so I did a bunch of those and I got pretty fucking good at them. You know, whether my form was perfect is questionable, but uh, you know, and I looked at that and I was like, well, I don't really want to do CrossFit because it's kind of gay. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's less gay than CrossFit? No. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. no, and uh, and you know, and then I was like, uh, and then my mate Zach was listening to Joe Rogan, and he was like, "Bro, Joe Rogan was constantly sending me podcasts, episodes of Joe Rogan." So you know, I was like, "Okay, I start listening to Joe Rogan." He's like, "Check this one out," and he's like, "Bro, I'm going to start training jujitsu," and then basically regurgitating and parroting all the benefits of jujitsu that Joe Rogan talks about. Um, to me, and he's like, bro, I'm, I'm, I've signed up to a trial class. I'm like, fuck, all right, well, I've got a jiu-jitsu gym literally walking distance from my house. It was your gym, and I run past it all the time. I see him running in circles and, you know, doing weird shit. I was one of the creepers that stood on the window with, like, <laughs> breathing on the glass, like, eh, what's going on? You know, uh, but I would. I would, like, look in and see what's going on and yada, yada. And uh, and my mate was like, yeah, I've got a trial class next week. So I'm like, fuck you. i got a trial class tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I beat him to it by, like, a few days and then man i was just straight up fucking hooked and yeah, right. i don't know i don't know that's a long ass story but there's a lot of whys i had a lot of whys so it yeah. fit in really nicely with everything that i want to do at the time mine's not too dissimilar ish uh but i think my why would go back a little bit further to answer the question of like why i started martial arts i guess yeah and it was for a similar reason not that i never had this bradley martin complex like i was always like i was i didn't receive too much bullying in high school but my older brother was bullied really bad so i kind of was bullied by default or treated poorly by default because i was his brother um mm. and yeah i just never had i don't know the reason without going down a rabbit hole of speaking to a professional in in mental health like i don't know if it was to do with lack of self-confidence or lack of feeling like i should be able to defend myself or whatever but it was or you know i would get any sort of potential altercation i would get super anxious it was almost like the the fight or flight but it was 99 percent flight even if it was just someone beeping their horn in road rage oh what if, what if they stop the car and get out and start yelling at me you know it was just this yeah like not like uncontrollable panic attack level fear of a physical altercation, but the, there was definitely a fear of a, of any sort of physical altercation. Mm. That's why I started martial arts, but then to quickly fast forward how I got from there to jujitsu, I did a martial art, you know, realized, hang on, this is kind of fake bullshit, went to Muay Thai. And I was like, oh, this is real. And then and I was like, a little too real. I don't like getting punched and kicked in the head. And then went from there to jujitsu. And um, and that's the why that I started. And yeah, if I talk about it in more depth, like it definitely changes the way that I just carry myself and my and my posture. Like I'll give you, I've I've mentioned this once before, but a very simple example is you know a couple of years ago i was and i'm not someone who gets in fights or has been in fights i think i've been in one street fight and it was like 15 dudes against me my brother and my wife it was just we got like cornered and beat on uh but yeah a few years ago i was walking on a footpath 
and it was a little bit narrow when I'm walking next to side by shoulder to shoulder with a, a stranger and walking along and then the footpath widens up and a cyclist goes round us and as he rides past us like I look up and and see him look over his shoulder with this you know like oh look on his face like we were hogging the whole footpath as he, as he rode off and then and then I you know shouted something like you know we'll ride on the road which in Australia you're actually supposed to ride bicycles on the road in yeah, bike lanes to ride on the footpath yeah 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 and then and then he like skidded to a stop but he's like kind of i don't know like 10 meters in front of me and he like skids skids to a stop and says something like i'm allowed to ride on the footpath or something like that i can't remember pre jujitsu adam would have would have like avoided that situation like the plague like mm -hmm. thinking that something's gonna go down mm. whereas like it's not like i was looking for a fight but i just like kept I don't want to say walking towards him. He stopped in front of the direction I was walking. Like I just mm. didn't break stride. Mm. You know, I can't remember what I said. I think I said something like, what are you going to do? And then he just like kept riding off. That's a silly example, but it's very like night and day compared to how, how massively I would have avoided that situation previously. Whereas now just, you know, the posture and confidence in like, there's no way that was ever going to, divulge into a physical altercation but you see what i mean how even a verbal altercation my you know i instantly went down a potential yeah. i made a i drew a connection from that slight elevation in someone's voice or tone whereas now that like that doesn't happen we don't even have to be talking about the physical altercation we can just be talking about a verbal disagreement used mm. to make me anxious Whereas yeah. now, because my confidence in being able to look after myself, in saying that, I'm terrified of people with knives and stuff and guns. Yeah. I, ain't going, I, ain't yeah. no, I ain't no Jackie Chan. I ain't going near They're any always of that gonna stuff. Run, right? yeah. No, I get it. But like, uh, I think that is a, a very good point because when men, I, I, I can't speak for women, but when men are talking to each other in a confrontational way, there's always an undertone of physical violence. You know what I mean? There's always like, I'm not saying that, you know, men can't, disagree without having to to you know fight but you never know particularly if it's a stranger what that other person's intentions are and you know if you're a person just living in a fucking whatever you you live in your life chances are that eventually you're going to have a very confrontational interaction with another person that you don't know another stranger like the one that you described or maybe even more heated i've, I've had heaps of he really really heated you know arguments with random people that i i don't know just you know like road rage and fucking are these the people, people who walk it walk into your shot when you're recording in a public space <laughs> you know those privileged like influences the, it's, oh when they walk uh, across know. my camera yeah i'm like fucking yeah throw it and, and then and then and then the influencers like make a big scene as if as if the person walking in a public space is the person in the wrong and it's like, yeah they're, they're oh, fuckwits oh i saw what, one what's what's the red the reddit the subreddit like i'm the main character yeah okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that yeah, <laughs> Kieran, that's Kieran's like i get into i get i get into heaps of aggressive arguments like, get okay. the fuck out of can't you see i'm recording it no um <laughs> there, i saw one this guy was recording like uh his deadlift on a platform and this random dude at this gym walks up to him and just slaps him in the head it has a go at him for hogging the platform for too long. What? Yeah, he was like, bro, you've been here for fucking X amount. You're like, you're wasting time. You're on your phone. All this just like randomly abusing him. Only in America, right? The guy that hit him ended up getting um, banned from the gym or whatever. But I don't know how I'd react. I'd probably react a similar way. I want to like, you know, I want to say that if someone, oh, if someone do that to me, I'd fucking double leg take down, fucking yeah, remake yeah, yeah. a choke. But yeah, I'm not going to do that. You know, if someone hits me or whatever unless they're still coming at me because he just hit him and then just stood out i'd be pissed off and i would maybe have reacted more aggressively than the guy did um but yeah i'd <laughs> probably gonna... retaliate with a shove or yeah yeah or, ju or, like or just or just complete shock like disbelief think... of what what had just happened and be like what like huh? you know? particularly if you know they're not like you know they're not like a like a threat in a way if they're if they're similar size to you but they look you know well, you, you never know what anyone else's like, what anyone else's skill set is, but that's the beauty of jujitsu. Uh, it makes you, I don't know, more confident in yours. Because what are the odds? Like, l let me put it like this, and I know we spoke about this before, but say I'm in that situation. 
some dude hits me for using a deadlifting platform for too long. And then it does like, you know, and I'm assessing, you know, whether or not I can take him. And then we do end up in an altercation and it goes to grappling. And clearly he's a fucking grappler as well. What do you think would happen in that situation? <laughs> yeah. You know, if he like puts me in Del or something, I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> puts me in like uh, uh, X guard uh, and I'm like fucking, I, mean, that, I don't know. That specific situation though is definitely where striking has the, the edge. Like you see some videos of, you know, dash cam footage or whatever and strikers ability to be able to read and see coming a punch that is like seemingly out of nowhere. Like obviously yeah. there's, it's not out of nowhere as in punch from behind, but just their ability to read someone's like hips moving and shoulders moving and to, and mm. to duck, a, you know, duck a punch like that. And mm. Whereas like jujitsu guys would just get like slapped across the face and be like, no, yeah. and then like, I'd and then definitely take get them down. across the face, but I would, I'm, a, thing, I'm right? terrible. This is you know, people watching the video. This is me. When someone throws a punch, I'm like, <laughs> like flinch, flinch and duck, you know, and yeah, get punched. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I would definitely get hit. But the odds of me getting knocked out on one punch, if if they're in front of me and it's not like a dog shot, I think a fairly low. I mean, yeah. I don't want to say they're low, particularly if they're untrained. So say that example, the guy, say he, you know, I'm deadlifting, untrained dude, comes up, slaps me, I push him, he throws a punch or whatever, and it, it does connect. I think of getting a clean punch that knocks me cold. I don't know. It's It's kind of hard to knock someone out when you're not trained. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it is. And then, you know, obviously there's the, obviously there's the horror stories of, you know, dudes just get hit once and knocked and out die. and then hit yeah. their head, you know, mm -hmm. but, yeah. mm -hmm. but normally those <laughs> cases, you don't see it coming. You're very drunk. So your, your body's very relaxed and it's to the back of the head and that yeah. would, that would fucking knock you out. They're, they're like the dog shots and there's heaps yeah. of dog shot, one, one hit, um, one punch deaths, you know, um, and then the head falls on concrete and that's what kills you. Right. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, yeah, everyone has a plan to get punched in the face. And you know, there's those quotes where it's like, Oh, you punch a black belt, it becomes a brown belt. You punch him again, it becomes a purple belt. I don't believe that, you know, as a one for one, but all I'm trying to say is in that case, if I got punched, I don't know. I think I would, I'd still be confident in my ability to close the distance, take him down and fuck him up, bro. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you shouldn't have been taking so long with your deadlifts. Who knows? You know? Yeah, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I've had a um, confrontation at the gym like that where I, and I think looking back on it, the reason I think about it so much is I probably was in the wrong, but the guy still acted like a fuckwit. I took a bench press before I was using it and I, I reserved the bench press, did like a warm up set or whatever, and then spent a lot of time doing a lot lower body warm up because I was doing something specific with the bench and another exercise. And this guy it was like, you're not even fucking using, like he just came up to me straight away and started abusing me. You're not even using a fucking bench press. You're doing um, like squats or some shit, like doing some sort of thing. I'm like, oh, I'm warming up for leg drive, bro. He's like, fucking leg drive, leg drive. And this big roided up cunt and up, oh man. It was similar to the slap uh, confrontation, but without the hitting. Just without and the man, slap. He was, oh, bro, he was so angry at me. And looking back on it, He's probably right. I probably should have let him use the fucking bench press, did my full warm up, and then tried to get the bench press. So he was yeah. right, but he went about it the wrong way. Yeah, it's it's like people who think you can have two machines slash pieces of equipment at once as well. Like if, you, if you're choosing to go to the gym and be more efficient with your time and superset shit, that's fine. But that's you don't get – But yeah, but you don't get to have like the bench press and the, the squat rack at the same time. Like, you know, like I, I mean you, you can do it. In my opinion, you can do it. Who's going to stop me, Adam? Who's going <laughs> to fucking stop me, bro? <laughs> that dude who slaps you. <laughs> you, can, you can do it. Come try but, it, bro. Um, Come try it. Fuck yeah. it. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe a bit harder with free weights because you've got to like unrack them and rack them. But let's just say it's two machines where it's uh, cable machines where it's very easy to change the weights for argument's yeah. sake. If yeah. you're supersetting, like, I be in my opinion, you by default have to let people work in nah. with you. Oh yeah, you can let it work in. I, I, no one wants to work in though. No one. No, wants, I mean, no I, one I, wants to work in. Yeah, but I, like, I do. I always ask. Like, I can. I, I, I have before, but not, not, not often. But anyone can work in. But you're, I'm not, I'm not giving you my machine, like my machine. I'm not giving up my reservation because I'm. Well, then how? Then you can go then fuck how, yourself. How many machines? Can, how many? How many machines can you have before well, it's like? You, well, now you're being selfish. That's where gym etiquette comes into play. Depends on the size of the gym. If it's a very large gym with not many people, I can reserve up to three machines, I'd say. 
any more than that to you know taking a piss. But this it's the same when um there's there's this type of gym goer that we call weight collector or that like the, the yeah, yeah, hunter yeah. gatherer where they yeah. just have like a huge amount of weights around them and they just haven't put shit back. I don't like that because you're not actually utilizing that. But if I'm utilizing a cable machine and a bench press for a superset and you walk up and go, oh, but you have two, so I get to take the cable. You can go fuck yourself. You can work <laughs> in. You can work in, but I'm not giving up the cable just because I'm also doing bench press. If I'm working at an actual proper superset, you can you can fuck off. Like but I think no. you can share you can you can share like Yeah of course we but, can share but you're not gonna want to yeah. share. Like you have to and the correct etiquette to share is if you change like say you, you're using the you cable. You change machine. the way you change it back. Exactly. You change it back. Yeah. So you, yeah. you change it down to your girly weights and then you put it back to, to my, <laughs> you know, normal man weights. <laughs> my wife just rolls her eyes at me. <laughs> uh, I don't like when she's in the room when we record because I get uh, all of her color commentary savage. in the form she's of body language and eye rolls and shit. I hate she's it. Savage. She's savage. She's yeah. savage. Um poisoning me. Anyway, so the main why that I asked myself recently that got me down this train of thought uh, is, you know, like I've, I've got this friend, I'm not going to mention their name, but anything that you do that perhaps doesn't like, he'll very aggressively ask you why about something. And if it doesn't serve this, very specific purpose it's a waste of time let's say for argument's sake if it doesn't make you better at jujitsu let's say because that's my career and that's what i do you know like why are you doing this if it's detrimental to your jujitsu or like why are you wasting okay. your time doing this if it doesn't make your jujitsu better okay so make you happy though oh well yeah no in the, not uh, maybe but not particularly but oh, that's anyway fun. i agree with it <laughs> one of my most hated forms of exercise is running I absolutely hate running mm. a i just hate it and b i find it pretty punishing on my ankles and as i'm older and had have had multiple knee surgeries pretty punishing yep. on my knees what do i look like i'm going to go do soft sand running fuck no i already hate running enough as it is like uh so i i don't i don't like running i don't enjoy it i'm not fast at it you know, yep. which is funny because when I was a kid, I was like doing little athletics as a kid. I was, I was quick. Yeah. But, uh, but, but I don't like running, sprinting, jogging, any of that. Moving. But yeah, moving, <laughs> getting, getting out of bed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but recently, probably now for the last, um, maybe almost two months now, be close to two months, I've been running only once maybe twice a week there was some weeks i did it three times a week and i found by sort of halfway through the second run one of my knees would really start to get quite painful mm. and at the moment i found sort of once a week i don't have any knee issues twice a week you know let's say for argument's sake every fortnight if i went twice a week you know i should be okay but you know, after that my knee starts getting hurt yeah it's nothing i do for i don't like track the kilometers i don't track the I, the only thing i track is the time and what i mean by that is is i just try to make it a 20 minute run you nice. know if it's 22 minutes 25 minutes i don't care if it's if if in that 20 minutes i only did 2ks i don't care right i'm not i'm not concerned about the distance or the speed i run very slow right it's like you could have like 80 year old power walkers go past me, but with whatever. The sticks. Yeah. yeah. With the <laughs> sticks, just cruise past me. Um, and I, I, I don't really know why I started to be honest. I think just, Oh, I do know actually, sorry. The first day I ran was when I got back from my recent ish holiday overseas to, to the U S and I got back and, you know, it was kind of just trying to break the jet lag. I landed and where I live now is nowhere near the gym, right? Like it's really far away. Plus I didn't have a license at the time. So, so I wasn't going to commute all that way. And, oh, you know, I just got off the plane jet lagged and I, and I thought I just need to move after being on a plane for 20 hours. I'll just mm -hmm. go for a run around the block. That was when the first run happened. And uh, yeah, but when I actually started, asking why like the all the reasons to run 
the typical ones, if you listed them, they would all be negatives for me for a reason to run. So if you said like, oh, whatever they are, let's say if you go, oh, running's a good way for you to, you know, to switch off, not nah, hate it. Oh, running's a good way to think about stuff, not nah, hate it. Oh, go for a run. It's a good chance to listen to a podcast, not. Nah. Oh, go for a run. It's a good I way to podcasts. look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go, for, go, <laughs> go for a run. It's a good way to get fit, lose weight, whatever. Not, nah, not interested. I'll do any other form of exercise. Okay. But then the, the why that I got to that made me go like, yeah, that's why I'm doing it and make me not necessarily enjoy it, so to speak, is that I realized that running is just such a basic, fundamental human skill. Yes. Like, like you learn to crawl, walk, run. Yes. And if we fast, if we rewound two months ago to that, um, to the run I did after I got off the plane, I probably ran, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. I think it was 15 minutes or 16 minutes from memory. Mm. I don't know the distance. Let's call it maybe two Ks. Cause I, I know when I was young, when I was late teens, early twenties, I could do like four Ks in 20 minutes it was like the best I ever got to. Not that it was okay. something I was trying to get good at, but I could jump on a treadmill at the gym and do, you know, four. So I could do, you know, three or four Ks at that sort of a K every five minutes, hmm. which I know, I don't know. I think that's a okay pace for someone who's not a runner, but whatever. For someone who's not a runner, it's, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I just realized it was a, if we went back two months, man, I did that. 15 minute jog or whatever it was maybe two Ks. I had sore quads for a week. I felt heavy and lethargic and I was thumping around. And anyway, fast forward to today, I don't particularly enjoy, no, I don't enjoy the run at all. I hate it, but I enjoy knowing that I am, I have acquired slash maintaining a very basic human skill. Yeah. And then, and then that started, then I kind of, that started snowballing where I thought, Actually, it's actually rather embarrassing if you if you were to sit and say like I can't run three yes. or four k's. It right? is, yeah. Like yeah. I actually think you know not. For, I don't want to like throw that out to all the public, but for me as someone who's supposed to be, I don't consider myself an athlete, but for lack of a better word, you are. You're a professional. <laughs> you know, it's embarrassing to think that I can't run three, four, five k's. Yes. And okay, I do it very cruisy at a slow jog. But now like you I went for do it. Uh, yeah, I went for a run on Monday. Again, I don't know the distance, but it was a 25 minute jog. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it's not on a treadmill, it's out on the road. I don't know how far it was, but mm. all I do is like I set the stopwatch on my phone, walk out the door, have a vague idea of the loop that I will do and guesstimate that it'll be 20 minutes, come back. Sometimes it's you know 19 minutes, sometimes it's 22. This one was 25. So, you know, and for me as someone who's always hated running except for when i was a kid and you run because it's play i've always hated running now i'm actually kind of okay with it and that's awesome you know, I, I do it once a week and yeah if that also helps me be a bit fitter have better vo2 or, you know does that make my cardio a bit better for jujitsu probably not but even if it makes it better by half a percent i'm not doing definitely make it for, i'm not doing it for those reasons mm -hmm. and I've had this friend of mine before tell me that like running's the only thing running makes you better at is running. It's a waste of time in terms of improving your jujitsu, blah, 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 blah. blah. An and idiot. I'm like, yeah. And it, but, but you know, I think I know who that friend is and that's just so wrong. It's been, it's, there's no actual, that's why I hate, sorry to derail you, but I just have to say this. That's why I hate blanket statements from people like that that say things like running, the only thing running will make you better at is running. Running will never help you jujitsu. Show me the evidence to support that. You're just fucking wrong. You're just fucking wrong. Yeah. One of the best ways to improve your VO2 max has been shown to be sprint intervals running. Running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's gonna, yes, there's a principle known as the said principle, which is specific adaptations to impose demands. The more you run, the better, the more efficient you're going to get at running. 
But to say that there is no translation from running to jujitsu in terms of your improvement on VO2 max is so wrong. It's just, it's just one of those things I can just say and make shit up. It's just making shit up. Show me the evidence. Yeah, show me, yeah. show me your, show me your study to show that is the case. Show me the study to show that VO2 max is irrelevant for um, jujitsu. First of all, you can't. They've actually shown the opposite in research that VO2 max is incredibly relevant to jujitsu. And then show me the study that running does not improve your VO2 max. You cannot do that. It's just so dumb. Well, Sorry. yeah, I, I, I actually that. think I as that. well, uh, I think it has improved my cardio. Of course it has. Training. Of course it has. No, I mean, not not a not a huge amount, but I definitely because no, you're not you doing know? a huge amount of running. Like yeah, you that's were, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what you're doing is amazing. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not not no, like, like man. I love, I love what like, you're doing. Like for me, if you yeah, like I said, you list off any of the other reasons for a reason why you should or could run, and I'm not interested. Yet somehow I organically. It wasn't like I was looking for a reason to run. This all just happened mm. organically, and then. And then the same way it happened organically, I organically started thinking about the importance of asking why, because mm. me answering that question, why am I going for a run has actually made me be, yeah, not enjoy the run, but enjoy the, the, the fact that I can now run again, as slow as a fucking, you know, New York marathon would take me 12 hours, but you know, like the fact that that I can now go for a three, four, five K run, a 20 minute, 25 minute run, and, yeah, and that, uh, you know, I think it's just, and uh, for the time being, I've been doing it for two months and I hope to keep doing it just as a, well, you, you need to maintain, this is a skill that you lose if you never run. Yeah. Similarly to that. that That's so awesome. I, I know I've been, and then just I'll, I'll tack onto the end of that, that I then also added that with, um, with swimming as well. Not as much a basic human skill because running, you don't, in little air quotes need to be taught, right? Like a fucking toddler runs, but you need to learn how to swim. Mm. There's plenty of adults in the world who don't know how to swim. But I think mm. in, if you grow up on the, any of the coastal areas of Australia, that's a pretty basic human skill to be able to swim. Yeah. Uh, and so I've started doing that as well. And similarly to how I, you know, my time in the pool is much less because this started actually because I take my son to swimming lessons and while he's doing his swimming lesson, I get access to the pool. So I was like, oh, I'll do some laps while he's in the lesson. Mm. And, um, and yeah, because it's only during his lesson, I've got a little less time. So I pr pretty much only do a 15 minute swim to make sure I have time to get out and be ready for his lesson to finish. But yeah, the same way I was trying to think it's embarrassing not to be able to run yeah, five Ks. I thought it's a bit embarrassing if I can't swim one K. Yeah, uh, no, which I, I can't. Which yeah. I can't. I can't quite do in fifteen minutes because again, I'm very slow. But I can do it, right? Like you know, what did I do yesterday? I did uh, twelve hundred meters. You know, <laughs> but at the same time, there was a dude in the lane next to me. Man, just looks like your regular middle-aged nobody. He was so fast, Poor bro. Guy. He was yeah. so fast. Like even, even, even when I was doing, okay, it's the last 50 meters, I'm going to sprint it. He's just cruising past me. Like when I get to the ends, I'm not doing the little somersault to push off, right? Because that takes more energy and, and breath, right? But it's faster, hence why professional swimmers do it. Mm. He's just cruising, somersault at one end, cruising, somersault the other end, cruise, like just nonstop. And he's so much faster than me sprinting. I yeah. was like, holy crap, bro. But yeah. I'm not doing it for that. Like, And then from the running, I tacked that on as well. The swimming started from having free access to a pool, but then I quite easily put that under the same umbrella of it's a fucking basic human skill, man. Like, yeah. you know, <clears throat> will I continue to do laps in the pool in the middle of winter? Probably not. But, <laughs> but, but at the moment, you know, I'm enjoying these skills that I had when I was younger but haven't done for decades decades mm. to now sort of have them. And I don't know, maybe the swimming is also helping my cardio in jujitsu. I don't know. You Definitely have pretty, is. pretty restricted Definitely breathing, hundred yeah. percent mouth, mouth breathing though. That's for sure. No, that, that's that's normal. You, yeah. you don't want to be breathing through your nose when you're swimming. It's yeah. dangerous, but uh, yeah, it's, it's called hypoxia training. It's legitimately a form of training that some people do. And swimming is an excellent way to improve your hypoxia training. And it's actually really good for asthmatics for that reason. Yeah, right.
Mm. So yeah, that's that, why I I was a I was a swimmer when I was younger. I did swim squad. I competed uh, at a state level. Because you had asthma when you were younger, or still, yeah, still do. have it. Yeah, yeah, still yeah, do. yeah, yeah. It went yeah. away when I joined the navy. Ironically, it went away for like. Well, I thought it was gone. I thought I'd like. Grew, you know how they they say, "Oh, you grow out of it." Uh, childhood yeah, asthma. Yeah. Oh, people grow out of it. I didn't fucking grow out of it, man. I still have asthma attacks like to this day. But it came back with a vengeance. So <laughs> I just had a period. I just had a period where it was like really good, and I wasn't using uh, my inhaler or whatever. Just yeah. living life on the edge. But yeah, I, I still have asthma. That's why I failed my um, dive medical. Well, part yeah, of the reason I why I failed me, my, yeah. my dive medical. So I want to. I mean. Obviously, we could talk for ages and ages and ages. We're going to keep this a bit of a short of episode due to some time restrictions that are going on behind the scenes. But um, my question for anyone listening is, well, first, I want you to do something. If, if people have any interesting whys to send through, as in why you started jujitsu, mm-hmm. I'd be interested to hear it. Yeah. Uh, you know, some are more interesting than others, but well, we want to hear it anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even but, if yours is boring. <laughs> you know, but as well, if anyone has any sort of, you know, epiphany moments like I did with with running and swimming, where yeah. you actually, or you know, maybe I don't want to get too emotional about it, but if there's any something in your life that you're maybe not sure why you do it, if you really ask yourself and answer that question, you might find that you'll you know, be more on board with it, or you might find you actually stop this bad habit that you've got if you really yeah. actually answer the why. Yeah. Um, this is not like a counseling thing. But- no, 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 no. <laughs> right. I, feel, I, I feel like this is a, a podcast that'd be like, and here's our guest, Andrew Huberman or whatever, and he could <laughs> go into it way more. But, no, uh, but I, I like what you're saying, and I've had something similar recently, but in a different realm. Um, and I'd like your sort of thought on this. So not to get all like counselly, but you know, that's for, for young men that don't grow up with like a father figure in the home, you, you lack certain skills unless you go seek them out yourself. And what I mean by that is simple things that are more traditional, what, uh, you know, traditionally what a man would do, like basic maintenance on a car or like basic handyman work. I know I'm talking in stereotypes here, but my dad was very, very handy with the car. He was practically a fucking mechanic without being a mechanic. He was a handyman. He could do anything. Like, so any, anytime my sisters needed something that call him and he would like, you know, come around and fix it or whatever. And that's what I saw, but I, I didn't grow up with that. So I missed out on those skills. So it was a recently, I had to change the fucking light bulb of my car um, he- headlamps, right? The, the light bulbs had blown, so I didn't have any lights. So it was as simple as changing a light bulb. But unless you've done it before in this particular car, I had a, I had a hard time with it. It took me over an hour, right? And halfway it's, through. It's not that simple. It depends on the model well, of car, now that I've, but it's yeah, not but the that model of simple. car that I, now that I've done it once, I, I could say that, you know, it, it's not super easy, but now that I've done it, it's, it's kind of easy. When you, once you, but it's like with anything, once you've done it once, right? Um, anyway, so I got to about the 20 minute mark and I was looking on YouTube videos and I was like trying to fucking change this light bulb. And it was, it was really, you know, I wasn't getting it. I thought that I needed like a mechanic or whatever because I thought I misunderstood, you know, I, I thought I had to take the whole fucking, the um, whole casing of the, the light out and bolts and blah, blah, blah. Anyway. The point is, I didn't give up because I was like, no, fuck this. I was stubborn. And I was like, no, fuck this. I should be able to figure this out. And I was mad at myself for not being able to figure it out. I didn't want to call my my wife's brother to to come and do it for me. You know what I mean? I didn't want to. I was sick of being that dude. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I spent, oh, I think I was out there for longer than an hour. And it was like snowing. My hands were cold and shit. But I, I fucking figured it out is the point. And um, it, that goes back to what I'm sort of saying about, you know, life basic skills that I feel like I should have. You know, I'm, it's, it's coming from me. I'm not saying that, you know, I should have these skills, but I feel like I should have them. So I'm, you know, uh, I'm kind of sick of not having these basic skills that I feel I should have, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. With cars, I wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't think that changing a headlamp is like the basic one, but I mean, the, if someone says to me that they don't know how to, in American terminology, pump gas, that's embarrassing. What the if fuck? You yeah, yeah, that's weird. If, if if you if you don't know how to change a tire on a car, like that is that's embarrassing. Well, in if you don't know how to open the bonnet and put more water in for the windshield wipers, that's, that's fucking embarrassing. embarrassing. You know, yeah. it, my friend is Italian, and he was telling me his mother 
has never pumped gas in her life. She drives, but she's never pumped gas because in Italy they they have someone to, they pay someone to do that. Yeah, so they I should never say pump that. Gas. Co- yeah, culturally as well, it's quite co- that's quite similar in Brazil as well. Yeah, uh, but lastly, the basic human skill that I have zero patience for anyone saying. Like oh, this is this is more basic than like the ability to run, right? People who say that they can't cook is embarrassing for me, man. Like I, you don't have to be a cook or a chef, but if you can't, like I literally know people that wouldn't be able to go seven days of a week without like ordering a pre-made ordering or going and buying a pre-made something like, like I'm not saying like I'm a great cook, but could I go a whole week where, you know, all I have is ingredients and I make all my food at home. Yeah. Yes. You know, like, yeah. and if you can't do that, I think that's man feeding yourself is it's like literally one of yeah, the things you can't live. It's literally one of the things that will kill you. You can't live without. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. And you figure it out. Like um, when I moved, when I finally moved off base, because when I was in the Navy, we lived on base, all your f- food was, you know, you get it from the mess. Right. Um, but when I finally moved off base, I was bodybuilding. So I was like meal, meal prepping and everything. You get good quick when you start cooking and you have to eat your food that tastes like shit. You, you know, it, it helps you along the journey of fucking being like, no, I need to, I need to learn how to cook. Um, because otherwise your food just always tastes shit. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to be great at it, but if you can't, yeah, if you, you can't, can't feed, if you can't feed yourself, that's bad. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, guys, we're actually going to leave it there today. Cause like I said, we do have some time restrictions going on behind the scenes. Mm. You look like you're about to say something or no? No, I'd just say uh, I did have a quick something interesting. Okay, Um, I've got a very quick one as well. So you go first. My something interesting is actually something depressing. I've, um, (laughs) uh, and it's not not super interesting maybe for for listeners, but I don't know. This is is what I have planned uh, to talk about is I have, it's finally happened, Adam. I've finally blown out my knees. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, recently I was performing a Choi Bar entry. If you don't know what a Choi Bar is, go back and listen to the Choi Bar episode. I was performing a Choi Bar entry on uh, with, with one of my training partners. And it's not like he did anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I just, in that windshield wiper movement, I heard a very loud pop in my my left knee. And, I was, and you know, it, it wasn't painfully painful instantly, but I felt something wrong. It was a very loud pop. And, uh, you know, felt it, heard it. And I even asked him after, I was like, did you hear my knee pop? Like, and he's like, nah, man. Anyway, so uh, it turns out I, w- I saw the physio yesterday, uh, yesterday, whatever. And I have a grade, at least a grade two tear on my LCL. So I was right. I was like, oh, that's definitely LCL. I was right. It was LCL. And uh, yeah, so we're not sure if I need surgery yet because the uh, there was an MRI, so I need to try and get an MRI. But in order to get an MRI, I need to be taken on by the orthopedic specialists in like a city north of where I am. So, you know, that's a gift and the curse of socialism is uh, it's free, but I need to get into the system. So long story short, I don't know if it's worse than a, than a grade two tear on the, on the LCL. So long story you know, short, you got, you got, you got more, more work to do now to come back to Australia and beat me up. Oh, mate, way yeah, more work. You, I, you're I just gonna have to be. Out. You're just gonna have to be on the ski machine, like getting your on the ski. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, they have. Yeah, a, yeah. They love yeah. skiing. But I wanted to ski this season, and I can't fucking ski now because if I have an LCL tear, there's no way I can do that action. No way. Literally, uh, in, um, yeah. Anyway, but uh, I think I did the calculations. If it is just a grade two and no surgery required, which I hope that it is, um, then I the soonest I'll be back on the on the mats training properly from now is um uh, fucking mid-january bro mid-january what the fuck yeah this is man there's it, even with a grade two i'm very i would be very skeptical that you would need a surgery need surgery i really no would. no even if, if it's a grade two i won't but if it's worse than a grade two which I'd the be, guy just I'd, has no idea i'd be a hard pressed to think it's worse yeah. But we'll yeah, see. but the, the movement, the amount of movement in the, that's the only reason that we're super concerned is um, if how much we give? did, oh, heaps of give. We did the stability test. 
Um, and I ran myself through a similar test and I noticed the same, but obviously when the professional is doing it, he was like, Oh fuck, you know, cause I, he got me to do a pistol squat. I was doing balanced things. I had zero pain, no swelling, which is very common for ligament damage, by the way. Um, and I could do everything that he needed me to do because of, you know, all the training I've done, I was compensating, right. And mm. like compensating very well. And he's like, Oh, it looks great. And then he got me on the, on the table and he was comparing my left and right, the amount of lateral give and my God, it just moves so much, Yeah, right. you know, uh, like what, you know, those videos you see where the knees are moving yeah, you know, yeah. in ways they shouldn't, that was my knee. And I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> it was real bad. Well, wait and see. Eh? Yeah. Well, my, my something interesting is a little less depressing, but very quick. So on December 2nd, we have another Subversion event. Subversion is a local Australian slash Sydney uh, event like who's number one. It's just all uh, you know, single fight matchups. And we have an Australian guy, uh, Josh Kulibal, who's actually fighting on it. So he's not known for his jiu-jitsu. Uh, he doesn't even last I know train at a a proper jiu-jitsu gym but the reason I mention it is because Josh is one of the Australians who's made it into the UFC uh he's had six fights in the UFC haven't gone great for him three wins two losses and one draw I mean his overall professional MMA record is 11 wins two losses one draw uh but yeah he's he's a featherweight so that's Volkanovsky Volkanovsky's division but yeah he's a local Sydney guy who trains in, in Bondi Junction in Sydney out of Igor MMA. Okay. A super lovely dude. And, um, and yeah, he's on the upcoming subversion card. So I just thought it's, uh, you know, it was noteworthy to mention there's a current UFC fighter who's fighting on the subversion card. Yeah. Josh oh, is yeah. known as, as a striker. He's not a jujitsu guy. Uh, but yeah, he'll be, he'll be on the upcoming subversion against, um, a subversion veteran, if you will, who's got some pretty sick, like big takedowns and stuff. What's his name? Chris Casaselli. He's from a, a Gracie gym. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're, f- they're fighting on December 2nd. So, Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, All right. that's it guys. We're going to wrap it up super fast, real tidy outro because people have got places to be. But honestly, if there's any things that you're not sure why you do it, I don't want to get too philosophical, but kind of ask yourself why. Also send us through any why you started training jujitsu would be keen to hear. Okay, guys, but until next time, thank you very much for listening.